By the end of this video, you will know how to build a list of potential suppliers, how to evaluate them, how to request samples from them, and when to share your full idea with them. If you enjoyed this, remember to smash like for us and do stick around because we're gonna be giving away this free supplier research spreadsheet. My name is Dan Rogers. I've been selling on Amazon for over five years. I've trained over a thousand sellers one on one, and I now focus on sharing my knowledge in videos like this one. And I'm happy to be doing so again on the Just One Dime YouTube channel. So let's begin. Step one, this is to search for suppliers. Now at this point, you've already researched and decided what product you wanna sell. Go to alibaba.com. This is the largest and easiest to use sourcing website in the world. Type in the product's name, then click search. The next step here is to filter your search. On the left-hand side, under supplier types, click trade assurance. This will filter the results so that all of the suppliers you see do offer trade assurance and this is a way you can protect your payments. Also select verified suppliers here. This will again filter all of the results you see and you will only see suppliers whose details on Alibaba have been verified. When you see verified supplier, what this means is that all of this information you see here has actually been verified by a third party inspection company. So for example, when it says manufacturer on Alibaba, if the supplier is verified, then you know with 100% certainty they actually have manufacturing capabilities. But when you do select this, remember it is gonna narrow down results. So if you find yourself not finding enough results, always come back here and you can uncheck verified. But now that you've searched and filtered your results, look through all of the options and find a product that most closely matches what you're looking to sell. The next step here is to consider supplier quality. As you move through these results, it's not only about how relevant they are to what you wish to sell, it's also about supplier quality metrics. Take heed of things like the number of years. This indicates how many years the supplier has been an Alibaba supplier, and more established suppliers tend to be easier to work with. But also look at these diamonds. These indicate the supplier's online performance index, or SOPI, which is Alibaba's rating of supplier quality. And SOPI is determined by evaluating a supplier on four areas. First is presentation quality. For example, the Alibaba listing completeness, or the certifications that they own. Next is product popularity. This looks at their average response times, the number of RFQs, and conversion rates. Then transaction volume. This looks at their gross merchant volume and also the number of buyers they've had in the past 90 days. And lastly is service quality. This looks at their on-time delivery rate, their buyer ratings, and the number of illegal violations they've had. And each area is given a number of stars between one and five, five being the best performance. And the SOPI that you see, the number of diamonds you see on the front of that listing, represents the lowest scoring area. So this is quite a harsh scoring system. But for example, if you see four stars, you know that is their lowest scoring area in terms of supplier quality. Step two, this is to build a list of potential suppliers. Now, before we carry on, you do wanna download the supplier research spreadsheet. And you can do that below this video or at job.com slash SRSS. But with that downloaded, you're now moving through Alibaba using all of these reference points. You're looking at what's relevant to what you wanna sell, but also the supplier quality metrics. And when you find a suitable supplier, open their listing in a new tab. And this is the point at which you wanna start transferring details from Alibaba to your supplier research spreadsheet. So within your spreadsheet, you wanna add the supplier's name, link, and other details. And at this point, you wanna add at least 10 suppliers to your spreadsheet. But once you're on the listing, you're gonna see a whole lot of information. The first thing you wanna do is navigate to this blue shaded box on the right. Assess whether the supplier is a manufacturer or trading company or both, as you can see here. And remember, if they're verified, you can place much more trust on that classification. Of course, for those wanting to make a lot of customizations, a manufacturer is often better suited. But there's absolutely no problem working with trading companies, especially if you value things like time and speed and 
aren't so concerned over customizations. So the importance and decision you make there really just depends on your needs and strategy. Next, click the underlined company name above this classification. This will open the supplier's mini website, which is like an Alibaba profile. We now want to evaluate the niche centricity of the supplier. In other words, it's often best if you find a supplier who focuses on your niche rather than a supplier who just sells everything. And this is because a niche centric supplier will generally produce higher quality products. Have multiple of your accessory or bundle components you're thinking about adding to the final product within their catalog already. They're also going to have the ability to make more product customizations and they're often going to be able to offer lower pricing. Next, you want to hover over products. Sometimes this is called product categories or just categories. Assess if your product's niche is in fact a line item here. If so, click it. But if your product type is not present within those product categories, then search your product type in the search box on their mini site. If your product is not a line item within their catalog and you had to search it, and for example, you found this where only two of the products are actually relevant to what you want to sell, then this means the supplier is not niche centric. It means they don't focus on your product type. And for that reason, you should not contact the supplier. And now you want to make a note of this in your supplier research spreadsheet. In this other example, the supplier has a dedicated category for the product type and has two pages just filled with variations of bamboo docking stations. For that reason, they are much more niche centric. They focus on this product type and we're likely going to look at contacting them. Again, we're going to make a note of that in our spreadsheet. And so from your list of 10 potentials, you're repeating this process on niche centricity to narrow down to five potential suppliers. Step three, this is to assess supplier capabilities. Here you want to look through the suppliers category on their mini site and find the product that is most similar to the product that you want to build. Click into that listing. The next part of this is to consider supplier cost. Before contacting suppliers, there's a few key pieces of information that you want to gather first, particularly on costs and capabilities. On any listing, you will see a price range. It may look like this, where you can easily see the price per unit when ordering different quantities. For example, here it would be $4.99 per unit if you ordered between 500 and 1000 units in total, or $4.15 per unit if you ordered between 1000 and 3000 units in total and so on. So the more units you purchase within a single order, the lower the cost per unit will become. And the number of units you order is called your order quantity. Every supplier will have a minimum order quantity that you have to order if you want to customize certain parts of the product or achieve a certain cost per unit. And that is known as your minimum order quantity or MOQ. In the customization area, you can see the minimum order quantity needed in order to customize certain parts of the product. Since you want to customize all of this, you need to order at least 500 units. In this case, let's say you are looking to order 500. So since we know we're ordering 500, then we can see here that the cost for one base unit is likely going to be $4.99. But in other cases, it's not so simple. It might look like this. And what the single range indicates is the lowest possible price, $4.20, and then the price $6.80 at the minimum order quantity, which in this case we can see is 500. So at the minimum order, which is 500 units, that's the lowest possible quantity, you will pay the highest price per unit, which is $6.80. But if you increase the number of units you order, this price would slide downwards towards its absolute possible lowest point of $4.20. Again, the customization area states you need to order 500 in order to customize the product. So for 500 units, you would pay $6.80 per unit. But if you were ordering 700 units, you would need to make an informed guess. And that guess will involve estimating how much lower the price would be. Here, it might drop, for example, 30 cents or so to $6.50 per unit. This is a very important step so that you can effectively negotiate with the supplier. You wouldn't, for example, want to pay $6.80 for a thousand units in this case, 
just because you didn't go through the process of properly calculating this. Next, we want to consider supplier lead times. And lead time represents the time, often in days, that it takes the supplier to complete your order from the time you placed that order. And even between these two suppliers, we see a massive difference between their lead time capabilities. One is able to produce 500 units within 10 days, and the other producing the same amount in 45 days. And of course, shorter lead times are always better for you because they're going to allow easier inventory management. You can click here for a video that goes over inventory management step by step. Step four, this is to contact suppliers. Now with your estimated costs and lead times in mind, you can contact your top five suppliers. Click contact supplier on the right hand side of the listing. An inquiry box will open. Ensure the quantity you want to order is set accurately. Then select from any of the applicable drop downs. You can also select customize if you're unsure here. Enter the detailed requirements of your product. It's important to use simple language here. And you don't need to give away your entire idea yet, but of course you do need to list the types of customizations you want to make. Number one, can they do it? Number two, how much is that gonna change the cost? So for example, here you may ask how much the docking station would cost if it also included another component, which was a wristwatch holder. And that is actually a great example of how niche centricity will help you because perhaps you saw the watch holder component within their catalog. It's very easy for you to then refer them to that listing or product ID or simply provide them an image of that product within their catalog. And of course, you can attach or type any of that in this inquiry box. But a couple of things you do want to do here. Specify that you will customize the logo, particularly if you're doing private label, and also whether that logo is a single or multi-color logo. Specify if you will customize the graphic or actual design on the product. And you also want to specify if you will customize the product's packaging. Another thing you can do here, since you have estimated the cost quite closely, knowing it's $6.80 for 500, is you can then make an informed adjustment to that price, for example, to $7, including all the customization that you want to make. This means it's much less of a random figure and it's much closer. The supplier is gonna know you've done your homework here and they also know they can't take you for a ride, so to speak. And check out our blog for a full article on how to negotiate and communicate with suppliers on Alibaba at jod.com slash negotiate. Finally, click send inquiry. And you may also wanna copy the body of text you put in here because you may wanna reuse it somewhat for the other suppliers because you wanna repeat this process for the remaining ones. Step five, this is to vet initial responses. One of the most critical points is actually when the supplier responds to you for the first time. This is because of four things. Number one is simply how hungry they are for your business. The faster they respond to you, the better. Number two is that it tells you how quickly they're likely to respond to you in the future. Of course, the faster they respond here, the better. Number three is how easy it is for you to understand their communication and how well they understood yours. And number four is how flexible they are in terms of your ideas. At this point, you might find that some of them didn't respond at all. Move on. You might find that some responded to you days later. And unless they have a viable reason for that, move on. And you may find that some responded very quickly within about 24 hours, max 48 hours, but they're very flexible, hungry for your business and keen to help you build your Envision product. And your goal is to find three of these types of suppliers. And remember, you may need to go back and repeat some of these steps until you have a solid list of three. Step six, this is to request samples. With your three ideal suppliers ready to go, it's time to request samples. And before requesting them, do sign up with a service like TipTrans. I use TipTrans to receive, store, and consolidate shipments into one international shipment. This is gonna drastically reduce your sample costs. And once you sign up with them, you will be given a receiving address at TipTrans in China or Hong Kong. And this is where you're gonna have suppliers send the samples to. Once all of that's set up, create a sample plan for each supplier. And it is at this time with your highly narrowed list of three suppliers, 
that you can begin sharing your full idea with them. Comb through the supplier catalogs and select any and all products which possess any components that you would want to include or morph into the final design. Also, if you can't decide between two sizes of a product in their catalog or two colors, definitely select both as samples. But you're making a comprehensive list out of each supplier's catalog of all the products that you want to receive as samples. Remember, you can also direct their attention to one component within a bundle product and you don't have to receive that full product. Hopefully they're a manufacturer and that's very easy for them to provide. This way, you have a full list of samples that you're gaining from each of your three suppliers. Also, these do not need to be custom samples with your branding, but if they have branding on them, that's often a good thing because that allows you to at least evaluate the supplier's printing quality. But with each list of samples in place, you're gonna request all of those samples from those suppliers. Provide them with your local TipTrans shipping address and have them ship there. And because suppliers often only charge for shipping, that's international shipping of the samples, and you're shipping locally within China or to Hong Kong, the sample cost should be much lower. In the best case, it should be free. But I would avoid haggling with the supply too much over this as you can save that for the proper order negotiation. Then your different suppliers are all gonna ship to TipTrans and TipTrans is gonna notify you when all of that has been received. You then request TipTrans to consolidate that shipment into one box. Everything goes into one box and is sent in one international shipment to your address. Step seven is to vet samples and choose your supplier. Once you receive your samples, it's time to evaluate them. Evaluate how they are packaged. Really important that you do this and you don't just rush through unpacking them. Look at the packaging, how securely packaged they are, the opening experience, especially if that's important for your product type. Evaluate how the products look, feel and even smell, sometimes that is a big customer complaint. Of course, evaluate product performance and how well it does its job. This is also where you can evaluate style, color, size, and make concrete decisions. And this is where you can evaluate how everything fits together. Try different combinations of the product and see how everything fits together or does not fit together. And if it's important and only once you have tested every other aspect, you can then test product durability, whether that means leaving the product running or stress testing the product, even drop testing it. But at this point, you should be 100% clear on the absolute best supplier. They often stand out from a mile away when you do get the samples. Sampling is a very important part of this process. But do inform the other suppliers, the ones you did not choose, of your decision because you might need backup supplies in the future. Of course, inform your chosen supplier that they are the chosen supplier and that you would like to move forward with them. And at this point, you can draft your trade assurance contract and begin work with your new partner. And you even have your physical samples, which are gonna help you immensely in portraying your ideas to the supplier. And in a future video, we'll also share how to ship to Amazon FBA from China, but you now know how to build a list of potential suppliers, assess them, request samples from them, and when to share your full idea with a supplier. And if you did find this insightful, please drop us a quick like. Also comment for me below whether you're gonna be applying this strategy or what strategy you use. Remember to download your free supplier research spreadsheet below this video or at jod.com slash srss. And this video was inspired by just one of over a hundred videos in our online e-commerce school, Amazon FBA Mastery. This is where we help people from all over the world go from knowing nothing about e-commerce to becoming professional online sellers who are able to work on their business from anywhere. So make sure to check that out at the link in the pinned comment below this video. But thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in one of the next videos.